Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Naya Tokens. What's going on, guys, and welcome back to the channel. It's great to see you guys. I hope you're having a great day today. I am excited because we are going to be testing out a Naya Tokens list, but not just any Naya Tokens list. This is uh, originally created by Power Dragon, and then I tweaked it just a little bit. I'll try and remember to include the original deck list, but in case I forget, Power Dragon, thank you, as always. Uh, and this deck is a really interesting one, so it's a bit more all-in than some of the other token lists that I have seen and played. Uh, and what I mean by that is that almost every single card here does something in relation to like pushing more tokens on the field or pushing more damage or doing something just ridiculous. And there's a lot of synergies that pop up in doing so that I think are really, really fun that I want to, you know, try out today. So uh, while we have played some Naya token decks uh, on the channel already, I thought this was going to be a really interesting one. Uh, a couple cards that I just want to point out right away. Uh, Bard, our, Gy our Gyvian recruiter, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, uh, not a card that I have actually played with before. However, uh, in tandem with cards like Gallag Readers, it's actually a really, really solid card because uh, it's basically like a free extra creature every turn, um, which of course helps trigger the Gallag Readers every turn. So you can continuously kind of little two card combo there, get things going. Uh, obviously, Resolute Reinforcements works amazingly well with the Gallag Readers as well, and then join the dance. There's a lot around the Gallag Readers card uh, that, that obviously is going to take advantage of all of those abilities because we are just throwing maximum numbers of tokens tokens out. Uh, and in fact, Power Dragon in his uh, in his deck title literally named this like maximum tokens or something like that. So uh, very, very cool. Uh, we do have Queen, uh, Al Elenol, Elenol, I don't know. Uh, these names, man. Um, but essentially, this is going to scale up with the number of creatures we control and help us get more creatures, uh, which works excite very, very well with things like Adeline, of course. Uh, of course, the Gallag Readers. Um, we do have Jenny Faye in here. This is a bit of an interesting one. So if you would create one or more tokens, you may instead create that many 2-2 two, two green cat creature tokens with haste or that many 3-1 green dog tokens with vigilance. Obviously, this is very good uh, just in general, but I am trying out Agnes in here, the Dragon's Lash, uh, which is an interesting card. So whenever a creature you control with haste attacks, you create a tapped treasure token. What's nice is we can create those cat tokens, get the attack in, get the treasure tokens on the back end, and then theoretically, maybe we've got a wedding announcement down. If we attacked in, we get to draw a card and we get all of those tap treasure tokens that are going to help us to play things on the following turn. Uh, now, as far as the top end goes, we do have things like Jetmere. Uh, we also have the amazing uh, Rabble Rousing, one of my favorite cards. Um, and then we actually also have, as kind of a mana sink here, uh, King Darren. So basically we can pay five mana, put a 1-1 counter on it, and then create a 1-1 soldier token, which of course helps trigger the Jenny Fay. so that helps trigger the Agnes, and you're starting to see that there's a lot of those synergies kind of popping around. Uh, we do have uh, the Cabaretti Charm here as a bit of a removal spell, an enabler for the deck, a finisher for the deck, giving each creature plus one, plus one, and Trample can certainly finish us out here. And then, of course, we do have Squee. Uh, Squee's a really nice card. I've not actually really played with Squee very often. 2-2 uh, with Haste, which does help uh, trigger the Agnes, of course. Um, but uh, it also, you create a 1-1 one, one red creature token that's tapped and attacking uh, when uh, Squee attacks as well. And then you can, of course, play this from the graveyard, which gives you that recursive ability. So a lot of really cool stuff here. Uh, again, just a version of the deck that I have not really played yet. Uh, and again, just some slight changes in numbers with uh, Agnes ad addition. Jenny Faye I went down on and got uh, two of the, the queens here. So just an interesting version of the list that I thought we would try out today. I think it'll be a fun one. Let's go ahead, guys. Let's jump right in. Let's see how it goes. All right, guys. And here we are for game number one. Uh, yeah, I mean, we can keep this. It's not an ideal hand by any means, but uh, we should be able to make something happen here. Uh, we do have join the force and then this uh or join the dance not the force this little guy is so good uh obviously much better with the gala greeters on the field but um might be able to make something happen here um let's go here 
actually. Um, I guess with that, we probably should have played the planes, but uh, I, I think spreading out some damage here early is gonna be pretty good against what we assume is an is it deck. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, we'll go here. Let's go here. And let's start spreading that damage out pretty quickly. So uh, obviously they can block here, that's totally fine, but we are gonna be spreading out very, very heavily, uh, which just means that you know they're gonna have to get rid of the Adeline here. And even if they do, we've still got a couple of one ones that are gonna start poking through that damage. Uh, and then of course we've got the, the queen that we can drop here as well. So very, very solid. Uh, we actually have the charm here as well. That's not bad. Um, Let's do the, the attack in first, I think. And we'll see what they do here. Okay. Uh, this is a lot of damage that they are facing. So five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's actually go ahead. This is a bit of an aggressive play, but I am gonna go ahead and do this. Uh, just to kind of force the issue on them. Uh, so if they have a counter spell, they'll probably need to use it. They're just gonna bounce here, that's fine. Uh, they do have two red sources still available, but we should be able to get rid of this, which just means that, you know, they're really not gonna have that much. Yep, that's fine. Uh, we still deal three damage to them and they don't have much at all. So this is an easy, easy uh, get for us get three damage in and now I mean they've they burned a lot of spells and a creature so if they want to keep the damage race going they're gonna have to play something else that's a pretty good one uh we don't have flying so it is worth noting that that's kind of tricky for us to deal with uh let's gala greeters um and let's let's just add a one Seems so pretty straightforward. Uh, we can start to offset some damage here. So if they, yeah, I figured they would kill that, but we are still gonna be able to get the uh, the extra damage in here. So this is fine. Obviously they get to, we, we net basically the same. So essentially uh, attacking in there for three, we get a free creature, they block a free creature, but it doesn't really matter. We're still dealing three and they are very quickly running out of resources here, which is great for us, so. Um, let's see, let's do this. I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of max out here. I don't anticipate them having that much, um, but we'll see. Okay, consider is fine, but it's not gonna do that much to us here. Hopefully they just don't draw into anything crazy. Uh, they've only got two mana available. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, now they have no mana available though, so we should be okay. They can trade off obviously for the Adeline, which is quite good, but uh, we do get rid of the Jin as well. And uh, yeah, we are, we're pretty stacked here. I feel like they do have three, th yeah. Okay, I think we're pretty good. That's fine. Um, again, we deal a lot of damage right now. So <laughs> let's, Let's see, what's gonna be the best play? I feel like, honestly, we are just supposed to attack in with everything. Um, alternatively, we could just play Join the Dance. Uh, let's see, they're gonna have to block this. Yeah, I'm just gonna attack with everything. I don't know if this is correct, honestly. I'm not mathing this very well, um, but they are going to have to make some, you know, decisive blocks here. Uh, they're at least going to have to get rid of something for the queen, uh, which I think should be enough to, to kind of force the issue here. I think I'm more apt to playing wedding announcement, actually, uh, as well. So we'll see. Uh, I think I actually care more about the gin than I do the Talarian Tear. Uh, let's go ahead and play that wedding announcement. This is just going to draw us a card, which is more important, I think, right now, given we are out of resources in hand. Fortunately, a land is not that great, but they are down to three. Uh, so really, it's just a matter of we just have to attack in with enough creatures and we have a join the dance ready. So sure. They are getting all their creatures, but it uh, looks like we were able to take down the win. That was awesome. Let's go ahead and jump into game two.
What's up guys, before we jump into the next game, I just want to remind you that we send out altars every single month to participating Patreon members. Now, please don't feel pressured, of course, but if you are interested in supporting the channel and picking up some awesome altars every single month, you can check out all the details over on our Patreon page at patreon.com slash itresolves. This month, to honor some of the most impactful lands we have ever seen in Magic, we have got the Urza Legendary Land Cycle, including Sarah's Sanctum, Talarian Academy, Phyrexian Tower, and Gaia's Cradle. If you're interested in picking these up, they will be available through the month of November and will be sent to you at the end of the month. As always, guys, we really appreciate the support and thank you so much for watching the videos. I hope you all enjoy the gameplay. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. And uh, yeah, this is a pretty easy keep. Um, again, we've got kind of a nice little start here with the Jenny Faye as well, which I'm kind of excited to try out because truthfully, I haven't had that much of an opportunity to try her out so i am going to just go here and play this um we do need an untapped source of course before we can actually play the jenny phase so we'll see if that actually pans out but uh interesting okay um i think we just pass here uh my anticipation is that they'll try and kill the recruiter which is kind of fine um let's see yeah okay Sure. So I'm curious to see. Wow, they are interesting. Okay. So let's do this. Um, I'm going to block here. Do I care to block here? Probably just take the block when you can get the block, I feel like. Right? I feel like that's probably the fair thing to do. We do have our own squee if we want it. Um, I'm going to Adeline, actually. So my, my thought process here is that Adeline's going to be much more difficult for them to actually deal with in comparison to any three man or uh, three toughness creature just for the like lightning strike potential. So here they are going to looks like double up, uh, which is annoying, but fine. Honestly, they burn two lightning strikes. So six damage to kill a four damage needed spell. Uh, that's great for us. <laughs> so I will happily take that. Um, interesting so we are a little stuck on mana of course uh the good news is they don't seem to have all that much going either so the question is can we get somewhere with this um yeah let's let's throw our own squee down let's attack in with just the squee uh and what we're trying to set up is a world where we can start using the jenny fey uh right away is essentially the way we're we're handling this they're gonna get an attack in here with the uh, the squee. Interesting that they're attacking here as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll I'll take that block. So they've got us down to ten. Ooh, very nice. Um, let's see. I think. Hmm. I don't love that this is on the field, right? Like that's definitely the problem card. So I think, I think we kind of have to preemptively do this, which sucks. <laughs> uh, but I do think it's probably just the right call. I am gonna go ahead, leave this one token back uh, just as a free blocker, essentially. Um, I, it's a chump block, of course, but uh, it just means that we're not going to go down to five, hopefully, which is pretty important for us. Sure, they can kick that. That's good. Okay, so we are going to go down to five, but um, I think that's actually okay-ish. So let's do this. I wish we had lands. I feel like we are just so stuck on lands right now, uh, which is really terrible against a deck where we just need to go wide. Okay. Um... Let's do this. Again, have to take a damage to play it too. That Carplusion Forest is great when it comes to like giving us the uh, the outs, but it just, it feels bad. You know what I mean? Um, let's do the three one. And basically we just have to hope we don't die. We are gonna have to block if we uh, get into a crazy position here. Um, since they do have lethal, 
wondering what these last two cards are too. Okay, that's not as scary actually. And they didn't kick it, wow. That was interesting. Still, <laughs> seriously. All right, uh, let's, let's think about this actually. I think we can just win, right? With the, uh, the charm. We're gonna be aggressive. <laughs> Let's get the 3-1 Vigilance. Let's make sure we're in full control here, just in case. Um, I do anticipate them blocking somehow. I'm wondering if this is if this is a Lightning Strike, this could end in disaster. Uh, but I think this is actually okay. Sure. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they, they have to keep blocking. Okay. I'm not counting this up, guys. I'm just going for it. <laughs> I'm really curious as to what this last card is. We're gonna go for this. If it's a lightning strike, we are super dead. <laughs> oh no, they can't even play lightning strike. I'm sorry, that makes no sense. It could be a play with fire, which would be kind of annoying, but like, I think it's fine. Uh, as long as we deal five damage here, that's all that matters. And there we go, we got the win. Woo, probably should have counted that up, but you know what? It was fun regardless. All right, let's jump into game number three. All right, guys, here we are for game number three. Uh, again, not like the greatest start in the world, but definitely worth keeping. I mean, we've got the Gala Greeters here. We've got to join the dance, which we can play immediately after, which does, I think, really, really well work with everything that we're doing. I think that's probably just going to be the best bet. We do also just have Jenny Faye, though, so we could actually just go that route. They're going to Circle of Confinement. Okay, so then I think Jenny Faye will end up being the, uh, the right call here. Uh, alternatively, I guess we could just blow that up. Um, yeah, I think that's going to end up being the call, right? We do lose our second green for the uh, Jenny Faye, though. Um, we'll see if this works out. That was a bit of an aggressive play, honestly, but I think it'll be fine. We really just need lands at this point. Nice. Looks like they are also Naya, potentially. Uh, could just be Selesnya splashing the garden for the, the cycling. Uh, that's a pretty common theme right now, so I wouldn't be surprised. This is scary because they now have Hollowed Haunting mana. They just have a borrowed time, of course. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and play the Jenny Fey here. Uh, it is gonna ping us a little bit, but we might be okay. If this sticks, we do have Join the Dance, like I said, and we can start to kind of spread out a little bit. Kami, sure. Uh, not the end of the world. Katilda's a little scarier, for sure. Um, yep, we're just gonna have to Join the Dance. We'll create two of those. Um, do we attack with Jenny Faye? Knowing that they could do that, I think not. All right, let's see what happens. Um, given that we have the Cabaretti Charms, I feel like it's worth it to just keep trying to spread out as far as we can and then potentially just win as we did last game with the, uh... ah, man. They have got all of the removal, goodness. Uh, yeah, fair enough. Very, very good, okay. Wow, they have had a killer start here. I mean, look at this. That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think we just have to block. Uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That would put us down quite a bit. We're still down quite a bit, but I think we just have to get rid of that. That was terrible. Um, I don't know that there's anything we'll be able to necessarily do here, to be honest. I think we just join the dance and get a couple creatures down and hope for the best. This is bad. Uh, the fa that that reign of truth is so, so powerful. Uh, it just does so much right away. Yep. And with a Katilda, I mean, my goodness. 
They've also had all of the removal in the world to deal with like our Gala Greeters, which is kind of our engine piece and like all that. So we are just kind of out of it. Yep. Yep, yep. Um, trying to think what we can do here, if anything. I think just nothing. I think instead what we're going to do is go ahead and concede and then we'll actually get a game four in really quickly. So let's go ahead and do that right now. All right, guys, here we are for game number four. Um, <laughs> let's try it. This is a bad keep. We need like lower ground stuff like a Gala Greeters would be good. Um, really anything like that. We're starting at three mana here, which is not ideal. But you know what? I'm in the mood to try it. And that's really all there is to it. Uh, let's go ahead and play the garden. Uh, so next turn, we do get to just kind of go off in terms of we get to choose what we want to go for here, which is kind of nice. Uh, we do have the Agnes plus Jenny Fay as well, which is kind of cool. Uh, just because we can kind of do some silly things with it. Uh, sure. Scary for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we just can go here. I'm gonna play the Jenny Fay, expecting Jenny Fay to probably die, uh, but the reality is we have another one. So I think this is probably the safer bet in terms of making them burn this one out and eat a removal spell, essentially. But we will see. Um, there's the blue. Okay. Interesting, okay, so they didn't go for Hmm. That's fascinating. Um, so I think we go here. Uh, yeah. And then we attack. Hmm. I'm actually going to go here and represent max damage. Uh, just in case they want to block. This is actually more enticing for them to block here. Uh, which I kind of want them to do because I don't want these infantry pieces to just start going crazy. Wow, they're just going to block with a Delver. That's weird. But sure, works for me. Um, we'll see how this goes. I'm uh, a little nervous. We do have the Squee. So next turn we can actually create quite a bit of damage with the Jenny Fay and the Adeline if they stick around. Um, but I'm kind of not anticipating that. Yep. This is the scary part. All right, so Ancestral Anger for one. They attack in, I actually don't think we block. Um, knowing that they might just have a lightning strike here, I don't wanna risk the Adeline. Um, at this stage in the game, they're not gonna be able to double burn Adeline. And I think keeping that on the field is much more important at this point. Okay. Uh, let's see. or non-basic yeah so that's got double strikes so four eight nine ten eleven sure it's a lot of damage that's for sure and they gain a life cool huh actually that's not that bad um all right well with that in mind let's go here let's go here uh let's gain some life I think it's just this. <clears throat> uh, we'll put a. Since we're gonna get all three, it doesn't really matter. All right. At least we're evening up the playing field here, and now we do have some blockers. So, like, if they are going to finish this game, they're gonna have to do a lot more than what they're doing right now, and it looks like they can't. So, that's good. All right, let's do this. Throw a counter here. Um, okay, so. <laughs> We're being very aggressive, but I think we just get to win this way. So I'm just gonna go here. This creates another token, which we then get to utilize. So this is like a crap load of damage. <laughs> uh, and we gain some life out of the deal. Yep. Yep. 
Yep. <laughs> I mean, they definitely have to block, right? Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I think this is enough to at least get them to like concede here. So yeah, I, this isn't more than enough to win. Three, way, way more than enough. Awesome, we did it. There we go, guys, we got the win. That was awesome. I'm glad we got to see the Agnes and Jenny Faye combo. That was really fun. And we got to gold three. Heck yeah. All right, guys, let's uh, let's wrap this one up. All right, guys, so uh, again, Naya tokens, kind of a relook at this deck, uh, but I think worthwhile. There was a lot of fun stuff in this one, a lot of synergies, and I'm glad we got to that last game in because we really got to utilize the Gallagher readers with the Jenny Fay and the Agnes combo. It was a really nice little synergistic piece. Um, I think we had a little bit of bad luck, but I also think we didn't play perfectly. I think we could have done a lot more in some of those, uh, or in that third game in particular. I will say they had all the removal in the world though. Uh, and unfortunately that did just make it difficult. So, you know, it is what it is, but I still think this deck is absolutely solid, especially without Meat Hook Massacre in the format now, as most of, we, uh, most of us know at this point, you know, that really opens the door for these go wide decks uh, to, to take over because a lot of times you can take over before the opponent hits something like a farewell or you can outclass something like a malicious malfunction or something along those lines uh, and this deck does a pretty solid job of being able to get out of range of a lot of those cards and things like Adeline are just so difficult to deal with and we saw against that burn deck they they had to hit it twice uh, deal six damage to it and two cards to get rid of a single card uh, And so there's a lot of spells that just outclass the mono red lists and things like that as well So this sits kind of nicely in that middle ground where it is trying to go wide But it does have some of the creatures that are gonna be able to stick on the field or at least take a little bit of extra effort to get off the field uh, and that's exactly what you want right now, I feel like. I think in the meta, that's perfect. So this was a great one. I'm really, really glad that we got to try this one out. Power Dragon again, thank you so much for the base list. I did make just a couple of small changes. And I think after that last game, adding in the Agnes really makes sense to me. Uh, I don't think you have to overcommit to that little combo, but if you can get it on the field, it's very difficult as we saw for the opponent to catch up. Uh, and so for me, that felt really good. But all in all, guys, this was a blast. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Again, thank you so much for watching. Do please check out our Patreon and don't forget we have our giveaway going on right now as well. I really encourage you guys to open up or uh, to, to subscribe and take part in that giveaway. You could win a free Brothers War draft booster box. So good luck to you guys. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.